What's going on everybody? The original may go back with a video that's a little bit different because it's a brand new, well, brand new to the channel game today. But before we get into that, be sure you check the links down below as always. If you're enjoying the content, please consider becoming a member on YouTube. As you can see on screen, we have a few members and I can't thank you guys enough for the extra support. Um, becoming a member, you get a couple of different unique perks depending on what tier you're at. And it's a really, really good, useful, and fun way to help support the channel. So I would really appreciate it. It would mean a lot if you checked that out. And be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content coming out very soon. Now, this game is an ARPG that is technically still in beta. You can get it right now if you want. It's not like a closed beta or anything. It's a very open beta. Uh, but they're getting closer and closer to the full release date and one of their biggest updates ever with multiplayer coming soon. But... I wanted to make a video on this game because if you know me, some of you may, some of you may not, any game with loot gets my blood pumping immediately. Whether it's Destiny, whether it's uh, Diablo, whether it's Last Epoch, wh whatever it is, if there's loot involved, I'm involved. And this is a game that I've been playing a lot and thought that there's a good chance that I make more than just one, a one-off video on it. So that's why I'm going to put it here on the main channel. I think this would be a really fun game to make build guides for, um, more tips and tricks types of guides like this one, and uh, I think it'd be really fun to do. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and get into it here, and today's video, as is said in the title, is going to be talking about the glyphs and runes and exactly how they work, what they do, and who they are, uh, <laughs> essentially. So as you can see, I don't have either of these two runes. Uh, these two runes are extremely rare, so I'm not going to be going over those, but I will be going over through all five of these runes and these four glyphs. So some of them are a little bit more straightforward than others, but I figured it would make sense to kind of show off some of the things and give you guys a look at exactly what they all do. So first up, we have the Shatter rune, the rune of shattering, uh, something you're probably going to be using most often. Uh, so it destroys an item, and it creates a random number of affix shards containing its power. So, every item, as you can see over here, has anywhere from one to four different affixes on it. And if you've got a um, an item that you get, and you're like, man, one of these affixes is really good, the rest aren't, so I'm not going to use it, it's not going to replace what I have but I really want some of these affix shards in case I need to put it on a piece of gear in the future. You come over here, you add the shattering rune, and as you can see, after we shatter this, it'll give us a random number of shards. Uh, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. For this one, um, I'd really like the level of summon uh, bone golem shards to come with me. So we shatter, and we got plus four. That's really good, actually. We love to see that. Uh, we got plus four out of it. So that's how the shattering one works. It destroys the item completely, but you get shards based on what affixes you had at the time of destroying it. Uh, next up, we have the Rune of Refinement. So re rolls the values of all affixes on an item within their tiers. This one can be a little bit confusing at first, so let's talk about it. Uh, let's go ahead and use our Acolyte's Revenant Cowl of Renewal as an example here. Um, if we go in, well, actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's use this one because this one has forging potential and I can actually show it off. Uh, so this one right here, we've got, um, 131% increased minion health, 45% skeletal mage damage, 85 armor, and 11% increased health. If you hit alt and control at the same time on your keyboard, you can see that there are ranges for all of these upgrades. Um, so... At tier 5, if you have increased minion health, it could be anywhere from 101% to 150%. We rolled kind of right in the middle. Um, tier 2 for the Skeletal Mage damage could be 39 to 52. As you can see, we've got a lot of ranges here. Um, this rune, our second one here, the Rune of Refinement, will re-roll all of these numbers for anywhere in that range. So our minion health could go from 101 to 150, Skeletal Mage from 39 to 52, uh, and so on and so forth. So if you have this and you've got, you know, maybe your most important stat is a really low roll and you're like, well, that's kind of fucked. I don't really want that. You just use this Rune of Refinement. We've got 131, 45, 85, 11. Refine. 
116, 50, 87, and 10. So that would be uh, pretty much an L of a reroll, but it doesn't matter too much because I don't plan on really using this helmet. So, um, so that's how the rune of refinement works. It rerolls all of those numbers, but it can only stay in its tier. So it can't, you know, reroll to if you have a tier four uh, range of values, it's not going to reroll to something in tier five or into tier three. It will always stay within its range. So you have a general idea if you hit Alt and Control where it's going to be. Uh, next up, we have. The Rune of Removal. This removes a random affix on an item, returning a number of shards equal to its tier. So when you remove it, um, you're guaranteed to get all of the shards. If you have a tier 5, you'll get 5 shards, tier 4, 4 shards, whatever. And it removes a random affix on an item. So if you went here and you used it, it would remove one of these four. Now, why would you want to use this? Well, um, if you're feeling lucky and you have an item that has maybe one or two really good affixes, but the other two aren't so good, if you get lucky and you use a rune of removal and you remove one of the affixes, uh, unlike the rune of shattering, this does not break the item. So you're able to add something else on top of it and let it fly. Uh, so for example, let's say we're like, oh, I really like health and minion dodge here, but I really want to get rid of strength and dodge rating and turn them into something else. Um, we remove an affix. Lucky for us, we removed a good one. So now we can go back in and add something much better for us. Obviously, there's a good, or not a good chance, but there's a chance that the rune of removal removes the good affix that you had. But depending on your forging potential, you can just put it back on. Um, you don't lose any of the shards or anything. You get as many as the tier so um it's a really good way to help perfect some of your gear that drops with maybe a couple of good and a couple of bad um affixes on it so that's the next rune um after that we have the rune of discovery adds random tier one affixes to all empty affix slots on an item uh, has an increased chance of rolling rare affixes. This does not cost forging potential, but it cannot be applied to an item with zero forging potential. So, if you have an item like this helmet that has zero forging potential, and let's say it had two slots open, you could not apply the Rune of Discovery. However, if you have these boots, which has an open slot, uh, I'm going to clear this, and we go to the Rune of Discovery, uh, it does not use any of this forging potential, but the gear has to have forging potential for you to be able to use this rune. So we're going to go ahead and use it just to show you how it works. It'll add a random tier one affix. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and screw it. Uh, we'll do... Oh, well, that used all of the forging potential, which is kind of wild. Really didn't think that was going to happen. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, now we can't use it. Well, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a good idea. I have a better way to kind of show this off. Let me go to the shop real quick. Dun, da, da, da. Hello. Let me take uh, Rune of Shattering, but I'll also take... Uh, let's go with that one. Uh, and now... There we go. Now we have two slots. Well, yeah. Maybe only one slot. I think... No, I guess only one slot. Anyway, we're just going to show how it works. Rune of Discovery, you add it as 14 Forging Potential. It'll add two random tier ones, boom. Still has 14 forging potential, and you have two new random tier ones. Like it said, it has an increased chance to add rare affixes. Um, this one, I feel like, is less useful uh, than some of the other ones. I don't use Rune of Discovery very often. I'm usually looking for something very specific and not just randomizing it. But could be a fun way to do, like, challenges and stuff. Uh, like, set your own challenge that all of your gear, you have to add runes using a rune of discovery i don't know anyway that's what rune of discovery does that's how it works there we go uh next up uh, last but certainly not least here we have the rune of shaping so rerolls all implicits on an item um this one is pretty pretty useful in a lot of scenarios um here i'll use these helmets as a good example so we have this helmet here which um the implicits are the things at the top of the helmet, so I can't really circle them, but everything above that plus five intelligence is an implicit other than forging potential. I don't think this rerolls forging potential. Um, so the plus 89 armor and 58% increased spell damage are considered implicits. 
Now, um, if we go ahead and pop the Rune of Shaping on, and we shape it, uh, 89 armor and 51% increased spell damage. So, when you use Alt and Control, it gives you a range of what those things at the top can be. Uh, we pop, whoops, we pop this one in. Whoa, ugh, are you serious? Now I have to re-go put the thing on Bungle, whatever. Um, and we see that we're kind of on a low roll for our minion damage here. So, if you wanted to re-roll that and try to get to a higher tier, you can use the Rune of Shaping for that. Um, and it's super useful because a lot of times implicits are a good reason you have some of the items. So being able to get those to a high roll is kind of what you want. Um, also, it's going to bother me if I don't do this really quick. So I'm going to go do this really quick. Um, great. So that's what the runes do. That's what the most common runes that you'll come across do. That's what they are. That's how they work. Um, a couple of them are a little bit worded weirdly, but uh, hopefully that clears everything up. Next, we have the glyphs, which are... Um, some of them, once again, straightforward, some of them not as much, so let's go ahead and talk about them. Uh, the Glyph of Hope. Um, this one is the most common, as you can see, you get the most of them, but you're also going to be using them the most. Uh, so it modifies the outcome of a craft, granting it a 25% chance to have no forging potential cost. So there are two ways to have something cost zero forging potential. One is to get a critical upgrade, which... I forget the number on it, but it's a relatively low percent chance to happen. I think it's somewhere between 5 and 10% for a crit upgrade. Uh, or two is to get the 25% proc on the Glyph of Hope. So let's say we have... Oh God, I gotta find another piece of gear to use more to, to show how this works. Alright, so let's say we have this here. And let's go ahead and put in a Glyph of Hope. Uh, and let's say, wow, we really want to upgrade our chance to apply frailty on melee. Um, it has 19 forging potential. We use it. Ah, darn, didn't proc. We use it again. Did not proc. We use it again. Didn't proc. One more time. Great. Um, okay, so I'm not even going to... I'm just going to stop there and say the the game doesn't want it. it. The game has it out for me today. That's that's fine. That's dandy. We're not going to... Oh, God, I want to show it proc, though. I have so many, I'm not super concerned about this. Let's go ahead and run it back. And Glyph of Hope. You'll see it at the bottom here. Uh, it'll say Glyph of Hope used. So we have 16 forging potential. I promise that this works. I'm going to keep doing weapons because I have so many extra... Oh, right. I have so many extra weapon shards. Let's just put on... What do I have a lot of? I have 22 cast speed. Alright, Glyph of Hope. Hey, Glyph of Hope preserved forging potential. We lost no forging potential, added it, and the Glyph of Hope preserved it. Jesus, that took so many attempts. Holy hell. Okay. So it does work 25% of the time, I promise. I was just extremely unlucky there. But that's how the Glyph of Hope works. That's what it does... Um, super useful for keeping forging potential. Forging potential is an extremely good stat, um, and you want to preserve as much as possible so you can have as many max upgraded uh, affixes as possible. Uh, next up, we have the Glyph of Chaos, the second most used one for me. So it modifies the outcome of a craft when upgrading an affix. It randomly changes the upgraded affix to a different one that can spawn on that item type. It cannot change a prefix into a suffix or vice versa. For example, if you use a fire resistance shard to raise the tier of a fire resistance suffix, the tier would increase as normal and then it would change into a different affix such as cold resistance or increased health. So there's a lot going on here, but it is relatively straightforward. Essentially, we'll go ahead and use one of our um, friends here. I guess we'll use this one. So if we wanted to change, let's say we just, <laughs> we just added the cast speed and we're like, well, shit. Never mind, I don't want cast speed. We put in a Glyph of Chaos. We go here, and it will upgrade it and re-roll it. That's what the whole last part was saying. So it'll go to Tier 2, but it'll be a Tier 2 of a completely different affix. So let's go ahead and do it. This will cost Forging Potential. It'll cost 1 to 10. Um, and now we have Tier 2 Elemental Damage. So this is the other way where you can... Um, 
try to, if you have an item that has two good affixes and two bad affixes, you can try to get those other two, the two bad affixes to become more useful. Uh, this one is a guaranteed way to make sure you don't get rid of one of the good affixes, like the rune of uh, removal does. But you also don't have any control over what it's going to reroll into. Once again, if we look here, um, we have all of these prefixes. So all of these are any of the options that could go here. All of these prefixes. It has to be able to be applied to that item. So it has to be, for this example, something that you can add to a weapon or a wand um, in this example. And it has to be in the same category, a prefix or a suffix. So you're not going to reroll elemental damage and get freeze rate multiplier. Or if you had something on this side, you're not going to reroll it and get any of this. So you have a good idea of the options that you'll be able to reroll into, but you have no control over what it's going to reroll into. So it's a little bit of rolling the dice, trying to get lucky. Um, most of the time it doesn't go well for me, but my RNG stat is permanently like negative 80 IRL. So um, that's how it usually goes for me. So that's the Glyph of Chaos. Next up, we have the Glyph of Order. Modifies the outcome of a craft when upgrading an affix. It prevents the roll of an affix within its range changing when it's upgraded. So this one's a little bit confusing. Um, but let's say... Um, uh, do I have a good example of any here? Uh, oh, here's a good... Okay, so... Let's say the most, it's not true, but let's say your most important stat on this um, item right here is health. Well, you go down and look and you're like, oh shit, my health is at the maximum range. It's also at tier five, but let's pr pretend it's not at tier five. My health is at the very top of the range and it can't get better, but if I reroll it, it might go down to the very bottom of the next range because that's how it works. Which, also, a quick little note. Let's say there was a tier 6 for health here. The lowest range number for tier 6 is always higher than the highest range number of the previous tier. So the lowest range number would be 100, over 112 for this item. Um, but it still might not. you still might be upset that you're now at the bottom of the range after being right at the top. So... In order to combat that, you can use a Glyph of Order, and it will stay at the same place on the range. If it's at the top, it'll stay at the top. If it's at the bottom, it'll stay at the bottom. So if you really want to keep one of your, your affixes uh, at the top of the range, you use the Glyph of um, Order, and it'll do that for you. Uh, keep it in the same exact percentile of the range. And not last, but certainly not least, the most rare... Uh, glyph you will find. I've actually only found like four in my uh, my character's like level 75, my first character, and I've only found like four of these. Um, but it is a Glyph of Despair. It has a chance to seal an affix instead of upgrading it. The sealed affix is moved to its own slot, leaving its old slot open for you to add a new affix. The sealed affix cannot be modified further, and an item can have a maximum of one sealed affix. The chance to seal is higher when crafting on affixes of lower tiers, and is also higher for exalted items and items with more affixes. So, if an item has four affixes, you're more likely to get this off. If the affix is a lower tier, you're more likely to get this off. If, um, if it's an exalted item, you're more likely to get this off. So, essentially, what happens, I'm not going to use my Glyph of Despair to show you, uh, but let's go ahead and use our friend, uh, let's use this back as an example. So we've got this and we're thinking to ourselves, okay, okay, I kind of, imagine if I had one more affix on this item, that would be kind of crazy, right? So we think, okay, let's see if we can maybe use this Glyph of Despair to seal one of these four affixes. Well, our only option here would be the Increased Skeletal Mage. Uh, if we were able to, if we had another shard, we could go to upgrade it and try to seal it. So instead of upgrading it, as it says, instead of upgrading it, so it would stay at tier two, if we get this proct, this will move to its own slot and this slot will open up for another item or another affix to be added. 
So we will permanently have tier two increased skeletal mage damage on this item. We can never upgrade it any farther. Uh, we, we can't change the rolls on it. We can't do anything with it. It is now there permanently, but we do get to add a fifth um, affix to the item. So once again, it's really, really useful. Having a whole extra affix on an item is extremely useful. That's why this glyph is rare and it's only a chance to do it. It's not guaranteed. Um, and it makes you, you know, you have to kind of think a little bit because if you're using this on like a tier four, you're going to have a lot less chance than using it on a tier one. But obviously getting a sealed tier four is much more useful than getting a sealed tier one. So there's a lot of options and things that you have to take into account. Uh, using Glyph of Despair on like a, a blue eye, something that has two affixes is just something you pretty much never want to do. You almost always want to try to use this with four. And then um, once again, exalted items, purple items have a, a higher chance to uh, get the seal off as well. However, keep in mind, okay, keep in mind if you want to create a legendary item, this, this could be a whole other video on itself, but since this is kind of important here, in order to make a legendary item, you need a unique item and you need an exalted item that has exactly four unsealed affixes. So if you plan on turning your exalted item into a legendary or, or yeah, if you plan on using your exalted item as part of a, a crafting a legendary, then you do not want to seal an affix because then you're shocked. Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Now I got to think about this because the wording, after I just said it out loud, because it says exactly, oh, so if you have four unsealed affixes and one sealed, then you should still be fine. Anyway, um, so maybe it is fine then. I haven't been able to test that yet, but regardless, it has a higher chance on exalted items. So if you want to add a fifth affix uh, and just make your exalted items even more fucking bonkers then that could be a really good thing to do so there it is um that is a full little guide on all of the um runes and glyphs hopefully whoops oh my god i got scared for a second um hopefully uh that helped a little bit and um answered some of the questions or a little bit of confusion on how all of those work um i still can't believe how long that glyph of hope took to work. I promise it actually works 25% of the time and it's super useful, but there it is. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate all the support as always. Be sure you check those links down below. I'm excited to make more content on this game. I can't wait for future releases, um, but thank you guys so much. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. I love each and every one of your faces and I will catch you all in the next video.